Right, welcome back everybody. Um, today we're going to try and touch on the subject of humidity, which seems to cause an awful lot of problems um, within the hobby. And I believe that the reason we're having so many problems, or people are having so many problems with humidity, is perhaps um, a lack of understanding of what humidity actually is and how it works and um, and how we achieve different sets of humidity depending on the species of spider that we're keeping or scorpion or whatever it might be everything requires a form of humidity of one description or another um, it's just different levels of humidity so what we're going to try and outline today is i've got some of these these little uh temperature gauges and humidity gauges uh, you can buy these off of eBay. They're literally a couple of quid each. Now, they're not 100% accurate, but we don't need to get hung up on the numbers. Yeah, so what I'm saying is we don't need to... If a, if a care sheet says 80% humidity, we don't need to be bang on 80% 24-7. Yeah, there's a whole... Um, gray area around it and it's the same with temperatures as well um, quite often we the, you know the, especially for for new people into the hobby it's too easy to try and follow a care sheet word for word and exactly a care sheet is there to give you a guideline of the parameters that that particular species will hopefully do well in now the uh, the parameters are really quite big so you can you've got a lot of room to play around and to investigate what suits your particular spider in your particular environment now here what we got here in this room this is a designated room that i have here which i heat the room itself um, i keep this room roughly 80 degrees fahrenheit during the summer months when we get hot days outside then obviously the temperature goes up and I've had it in the mid 90s in here without any problems at all. It doesn't affect my spiders temperature wise. Now in the winter time, I allow the whole thing to drop down and I'll go down to sort of low 70s. Uh, and I do that for a couple of months and then I gradually bring them back up again. Now, humidity gets affected in this as well. In the summertime, you'll see on the windowsill here, I've got all my plants and bits and pieces which eventually end up going into tanks for, for spiders. But these all require watering. And as you can see, they're in trays. That throws my room humidity up. So when you walk into this room, it feels quite humid. At the moment, the humidity in this room is sitting at 62%, um, which is about average for this room. It's pretty much 62% at this time of year, all the time, uh, you know, at this, this time of year, it's, it's always sits around about 62%. Now, this affects what goes on in your vivariums, within your enclosures. So, as you all know, most of my spiders and what have you are arboreal species, and most of them are tropical or subtropical species. So, they actually enjoy quite a bit of humidity. Now, along with temperature, humidity, we also... Um, that there's other parameters that we need to be taken into account as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a we'll have a little look at these. Now, airflow is another really really um, important topic, and we'll and we'll try and cover that a little bit now because that also reflects on your humidity. So the amount of airflow you get within your environment will reflect on the amount of humidity that it contains. So what we're going to do is. If you would like to come over here, you can have a look in here. I have a top one here. Now, in here, you can see that, that that temperature and humidity gauge in there is sitting at 74% humidity. Now, within this enclosure, this enclosure is absolutely bone dry. That is entirely bone dry. If you look here, you can see that substrate is bone dry. Now there's an OBT in there and everywhere in there, she is sitting in completely bone dry surroundings and yet 
her air humidity. This is the thing. Humidity is an airbound thing. It's not something you can see or you can touch. Yeah. So her air humidity is 74%. Now, if you was to go out into Africa and places like that, the air humidity, although it's very dry there, the evenings are very wet. So you get very, very um, wet periods in the morning and again at the end of the day. And, and this is where your wetness comes from. So this 74% is not going to harm her in any way. If we to make her bone dry with zero humidity, she'd probably die. It would kill her. So we've got to get things into, into perspective for what we're doing. So she's on a top shelf. So bearing in mind, it's much warmer up here than it is down on these, these shelves here. So humidity will change as it goes through the room as well. Now, if we come over to this one and come down here, You'll see in this particular tank, this is where we keep our Martelink pink toes, or one of them. And you'll see up in the corner there, her humidity is sitting at 80%. Yeah? So you've seen that she, although she's lower in the shelving, her actual environment holds more humidity. And that is because this particular spider... We spray this spider, and as you'll all know, all of the, the, uh, the pink toes, the avicularia, they, they all like a humid environment. Now, 80%, absolutely perfect for this spider. She loves that, really, really good. Now, we can maintain that 80% a lot of the time just purely through evaporation from the water bowl. Her substrate, you'll see here, if you look down here, this is just damp. It's just damp there. As you can see, if we open it up, now it's diff this is difficult to show on film, this bone dry. That is absolutely bone dry. Yeah, there's no, no water there at all. Absolutely bone dry. But what it does is the moss locks in, you see the dampness underneath? The moss locks the dampness in the substrate underneath. And so it only evaporates very, very slowly. And that's what's given us our 80% humidity. So our enclosure design is aiding the humidity. Now, if we look over here, we've got another tank here. This is where our whip scorpions are. Now, as you can see on the back there, that one there is reading 75%. Now these guys like a high humidity all the time. Now what I want you to do is watch this. Actually, we'll do that in a second. Look at this one here. This is our GBB. And as you'll know, this is a dry species. And you'll see her humidity is sitting at 70%. Now that's not, that's a fair humidity for her. She doesn't really need it any much more, but she could take she could handle it quite a bit more. You'll see her substrate is very very dry. There is no moisture in this, so all of the humidity within her environment is coming from her water bowl and the general warmth in the room. Don't forget this room is sitting at eighty degrees Fahrenheit, so eighty degrees outside here. When it comes down to inside the tank, that's evaporating the water out of her bowl, and that's what's given her 70%. It's still quite low, but she can handle that perfectly well. Now, when we look at completely dry species, if we come over here, we can have a look at this little fella here. This is a Sicarius terosus, which is a six-eyed sand spider, and as you can see, She's patiently waiting for her meal to come and walk by. But if you have a look in the back there, you can see we've got a little temperature gauge there. Now she is absolutely bone dry. There's no water bowl, there's no nothing in there. And yet she is still sitting at 67%. Now, one thing to bear in mind with this particular species, if we was to put water in there, any kind of dampness in there, you're pretty much going to put a nail in her coffin. These guys do not like moisture at all. So keeping them bone dry is really, really necessary. But you notice we can keep her bone dry, but our air humidity, this is the important point, the, the, the humidity is in the air. 
It's not something we touch. It's in the air. The air humidity at 67% is no problem to her whatsoever. If anything, when it comes to molting and things like that, this will aid in her molting. So hopefully it's sort of showing these things. We've got two here. These are, these are both in exactly the same enclosures. We've got a Balfouri on the left here, and she's sitting at 66%, which is fairly dry. And then we've got a funnel web right next door. And now you'll see there that the, um, the substrate is damp there. And you'll see hers is sitting at 75 percent that's 10 degrees difference between these two tanks and they're side by side they've both got vent uh, open vent um, lids on them so you can see that the substrate and what have you and the fact that this has got um cork bark in there so the the moisture is held underneath that cork bark and it's being slowly released. You can see how it's up the humidity within this tank. Whereas this one is just plain substrate. There is nothing else in there. She's buried down inside it, but you see it doesn't hold anything, 66%. So, right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and show now with our water, we're gonna go back to our whip scorpions and as you can see in there, we're sitting at 75%. Now you'll notice the wood is dry, the moss is dry. Plants are doing well, they're growing, look, there's no problem there. Everything in here is absolutely dry, which is exactly what we want. Remember, we can't see humidity. A water bowl, you can put a little bit in there, just top that up. Now what I'm gonna show you is where a lot of people go wrong. You've seen this tank is completely bone dry, 75%, it's perfect. It's just where we want it to be. What we're gonna do now is what everyone else seems to do. I know, the care sheet says we want 75, 80% humidity. I know, here we go. Let's give it some humidity. Oh, look at that. That's lovely, isn't it? Oh, look, I've killed my plant. He don't like water either, look at that. What we've done, if we have just soaked that now, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to it. So we've given it a good look. Come over here. We're gonna do the same here. We're gonna do the same here. 80% on this pink toe. A water bowl is full. See that? She's got, there's already, there's water in there. That's full up. So you can see that. So that's, these are all open top to remember. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the same with this one. We're going to whop a load of, a load of water in here. And we're doing this, why? Because the care sheet says, you must keep your humidity up. And this is what a lot of newbies do. They'll come along and they think, well, humidity, that's wet, isn't it? No, it's not. So what we're gonna do is we've soaked that and we've closed it. That's gone up five degrees already. And I've only just shut the door. It's gone up five degrees. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave them be for a minute. And we're gonna come back to them. Now, Another thing that's, um, that makes humidity an important thing and a difficult thing to get to grips with is a style of enclosure that you use. You'll notice here, I, I do like my XOs. I, I use a lot of XOs and these are all got um, wire roofs, which I have no problem with, no problem at all. Now, it means that I can maintain the environment, I can maintain the humidity and the temperature far easier within this room environment. Now, you'll also know some of you guys that have heard me mention in the past that I don't particularly like glass enclosures. I'm not a lover of them. Now this one here, this is a custom aquaria. Lovely glass tank, nothing wrong with the tank at all. Um, what it has got is a, a glass top and it's got this tiny little bit of mesh here, which is the, the ventilation for this tank. Now that's all well and good, but there's no airflow through this tank, none at all, because we are actually got a sealed tank. 
Now, if you come over here, have a look at the temperature gauge in this one. That is 96 degrees, uh, 96 percent, sorry, humidity. And if you look down at the substrate, this is bone dry. Look at this. This is dry. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's not, that's dust on my fingers. Look at that. It's not even sticking to my finger. Yeah, that's bone dry. Now, what we got in here is uh, our Patra pole grips, the gold and blue leg baboon. All of this humidity within this tank is coming from this water dish. And the reason we are suffering, because this spider does not need this humidity. This is far too much humidity for this particular species of spider. These like to be kept reasonably dry. So as we saw earlier on, our OBT is another one that likes to be dry, but that's sitting at 70%. But the difference is that 70% with really good airflow, which makes it safe. Yeah, this is 95, 96% with zero airflow. You cannot get airflow with just a vent at the back. If we had a vent at the front as well, we would get airflow and it would be a, a reasonable, you know, a good tank to keep it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another video and this girl here, we're going to catch her up and we're going to put her in a different enclosure. But I just thought I'd show you this because this is the totally wrong way to look after this spider. Yeah, because of the airflow. We've got no airflow, which also means we can't control the humidity. So this, as a setup, is a no-no. You know, this is bad news. We don't need to, we don't want to be doing this. So hopefully that will highlight the fact that a sealed glass tank is, is not a particularly good investment for any particular spider, if you like, um, because you've got that, that zero airflow. But we've noticed with all of the other tanks, these have all got vents on the tops. All of them are open topped and that you're getting that airflow, you're, get, you're getting that movement, which is very, very important, especially when you're looking at your tropical spiders, your subtropical spiders, all your arboreal stuff, it all likes a lot of humidity, but you also need the, the air movement within that to keep a safe environment. If you, if you keep them like this, even an arboreal, a, a, a spider that loves a high humidity, if you've not got the airflow, you've got a stagnant environment and that will kill your spider. And quite often or not, that is where most people lose their avicularias is because they keep them too wet and there's not enough airflow. If you look at any of them that do well, their actual environment is dry. The humidity is within the air. I can't stress this enough. Right. So if we have a look, we'll go back now to the ones we've, we've uh, soaked. Bear in mind, what was that? A couple of minutes. Look at this one. That now. That shot up to 95%. Yeah? 95%. This one, 89%. Now what we've done now, I've, I've soaked these particular tanks to try and show you that if you're seeing water on the side of your glass, things like this, if it's dripping, it's too wet. You can't keep your spiders full time in them conditions. That is not a humid environment. That is a wet environment. Two entirely different things. What I will say is in this particular room and for my maintenance, I do spray mine once a week. I give them a good spraying, a bit like you've just seen, and that spikes the humidity way high. But I've got open air vents in all of these and I can guarantee you within an hour, all the sides will be dry and the moisture would have gone back down into the substrate and it will slowly be released again, maintaining the humidity levels that you're reading today. We saw this at 80%. This has been like this since probably Tuesday. I normally spray either on a Saturday or a Sunday. These would have done last Sunday. Um, so it would have had Sunday and Monday. It would have been very, very high humidity, which isn't a problem on its own as long as it's allowed to dissipate and level out. And that's what we've done. So 
hopefully that's tried to highlight some of the some of the things with with humidity and understanding how it works um it's a very difficult subject to try and show in in one short video um uh, hopefully that's that's given you a little bit of an insight humidity is is it can be your friend or it can actually be your enemy you need to get get your head around how it works if you've got um like for me, I'm lucky I've got this room. I, I can control this environment entirely. If you're, um, you've got your spiders, say for argument's sake, in your bedroom, or maybe they're on a, you know, on a, on a cupboard in the living room, you can still do the same thing, but your parameters are slightly different. So what you need to do is you need to be able to maintain your tank as a, a single unit. Um, it's a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. So what you can do is you've got this one unit here. If you're, for argument's sake, in my living room, my relative humidity in the air in my living room is probably about 40%, somewhere around there this sort of time of year. Um, so obviously my tank is going to be a lot lower than what it is in here. So all I need to do is make sure that I keep my humidity up. And you can do that by using your substrate. Don't forget, you don't want to be soaking the whole thing. Use your water bowls or your substrate to create the humidity release. Yeah, so if you're struggling, put a slightly bigger water bowl in, put a deeper water bowl in, so it takes a lot longer to evaporate. This will all help and, and keep your maintenance down to a, a reasonable level. So um, yeah, so if you yeah, if you put a, a bigger, deeper bowl in there, you'll, you'll get that evaporation slowly, which means that your humidity value within your tank will stay more consistent, yeah? Um, and the same with heating, temperature-wise, you need to work out how you're gonna warm warm your um, enclosures to the maximum. Um, and, and by doing that, if you've got them out on an open shelf, then obviously you need to run thermostats and things like this to keep, to keep it absolutely where you need it to be. But it's much easier to do it in a room. Right then, I think we've sort of covered covered most things there I hope um, it is like I say it is a very difficult subject to try and cover what we are thinking of is after you've watched this if you think it would be beneficial we are considering doing maybe a live stream on the same subject uh, where you could then get involved yourselves and you can throw questions at me and uh, we can perhaps try and answer these questions which is easier than me trying to think of answering questions if you see what I mean. So um, yeah, put it down in the comments if you'd like to see a live stream and uh, then we can, if we get enough interest, then we can perhaps try and put one together and uh, we can sit down one evening and uh, we'll, we'll have a, a right proper question and answers type, type scenario and uh, see where that takes us. And then we can go around the room and we can look at different ones and I can show you what I do to achieve different things. So uh, I hope that was helpful um, and not too confusing. I do babble on a little bit sometimes and uh, confuse myself sometimes. So, yeah, I hope you guys got the, the end of it anyway, got the right idea. So, uh, right, I hope that was useful. Don't forget, be calm, be gentle and love your spiders. Cheerio.